God, she's perfect. Oh. Ah! Oh my God. Guys. We're doing this. Yep. I'm a degenerate. Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Furry Protogen, a dating simulator game that has just released about dating your very own protogen, Juno. I am very excited. Um, I'm very excited. What am I doing with my life? My name is Rael. Yes, hello. My name is Rael, the protogen. Hi, everybody. There's a lot of dialogue in this game. So in order to keep this video at a reasonable length, I'm going to fast forward through a lot of the not important stuff. This first section was about 30 minutes of me just getting the backstory when I can summarize it for you in just a few phrases. We are chosen by God. We are the chosen one of this village. Everybody treats us as a super important person and we're sick of it. We feel like a bird trapped in a cage. Our best friend isn't even our friend. He's a guard just like Link is to Zelda. We're so important that birthdays for other kids are moved around our birthday. So their birthdays aren't even celebrated on their birthday. We get everything for free. We're basically pretty important. All of this information is leading up to our 20th birthday where we have to give this important speech. In this speech, we kind of say some not cool things like um, God isn't real and that being the chosen one is stupid. And the whole village ends up hating us. So we run away into the forest and I'll just let the video play from here. And if you want to see any of that dialogue in that video, join the channel members because an uncut version of this video has been uploaded and is available for you to watch. I'm going to warn you, though, it's an hour long. Anyway, let's get to the real reason everyone's here. I, I know why you're all here. I know why you're here. I'm disappointed in you. Oh, shit. We interrupted the natural balance and the natural order of the village. Oh, we're in the forest. So I'm finding it a little strange that this entire time we haven't actually had any artwork aside from the background artwork. Are the elders supposed to have art or are we going to get all that when the protogen, when Juno shows up? Because let's be real. This is the part I care about. Juno. Maybe we'll meet her in the forest. I don't know. Either way, I would have to return. Otherwise, I would just die of hunger. I wouldn't last long on berries and mushrooms in the forest. I sigh it heavily. Uh, where's Juno? But once in the middle of the forest, alone, free to go in all four directions, I quickly realized the reality of the situation. I had no food, no equipment, no map, nothing at all. These shoes designed for the birthday celebration would wear off very quickly and I would soon have to walk barefoot. Then winter would come and in the end, I'd just die in the middle of an unfamiliar wilderness, having seen enough of it. That would be the sad story of the chosen one from the Northern Valley. What should I do? I buried my head in my knees and tried to get my emotions under control. It was impossible to go give up now. It was too dangerous. It was necessary to get a grip. Considering everything to make a decision, it wouldn't work any other way. But it was easier said than done. Everything had been decided for me all my life, and now I was suddenly face to face with my own choice. There was no one around me to help me, no one to tell me what to do. Out of desperation, I raised my eyes to the sky. Mother of heaven, or lit, whatever, it doesn't matter. You exist, and I was wrong. Forgive me and tell me what to do. Give me at least some sign, please. I'm completely lost. The sun was shining brightly overhead. The sky was blue and clear, but I didn't see any answer from the mother of heaven or lit. If you are offended, then don't be. I didn't know what I was talking about. Things got pretty messed up, and listen, you're kind of wise and understanding, aren't you? I guess you would see I didn't mean any harm. Mother of Heaven and Lit were still silent. I completely thought how stupid I must look and laughed to myself. Yeah, right? How I've stooped so low. I'm talking to fictional creatures. No wonder they don't answer. You know what? I looked up at the sky as if it were looking back at me. I don't need your help and your advice. I'll take my chances without you. Juno? Is that my darling Juno? Suddenly, as soon as I finished, I heard a loud bang somewhere nearby down the river. I almost fell into the water, jumping so high from my surprise. Goosebumps rolled down my back, and my mouth went dry. I got to my feet, staring into the thicket of the forest in the direction from which the sound came. 
No animal could possibly make such a sound, and it certainly couldn't have been made by the forest itself. There were two options left. Either there were other people here, or, or the mythical mother of heaven and lit, in which I didn't even believe, decided to give me a sign in this way. I slowly went into the direction which I heard the bang. I made my way through the thickets and came to the clearing near the riverbank. What appeared before my eyes didn't look like a human or an animal. It was a huge metal object with flashing lights of different colors. It somewhat resembled a boat, but much larger. Maybe it was all just my imagination. Maybe there was nothing here, May and I just hit my head when I fell. On the other hand, how did I manage to fall in such a way? <laughs> oh, look at... Oh my god! Oh, Miss Juno! Hello, how you doing? Oh my god, look at you! You're so beautiful! Ah! At that moment, a creature came out from behind a huge piece of the metal object. It moved on two legs and looked like very much like human, but obviously it wasn't one. Um, oh, uh, hi, hi, hello, hi, hi, I'm Rael. It's very nice to meet you. I am a protogen, just like you. Would you want to go get uh, some dinner later? Oh, my God. Holy shoot. Oh, my God. Oh my god, you are ah, You're beautiful! I am Oh I am some some's giving me the vapor. Some says some's some's giving me a little Ooh. The creature, judging by its shape, was a female. She noticed me and rushed towards me. She then said something, but I didn't understand a word. Everything she said resembled one syllable. Pronounced in different innotations, I somehow forced myself to get a grip and blinked. Uh, sorry, are you trying to talk to me? The girl, as far as I could tell from her impressive breasts. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't think to switch my helmet to the right mode. I've never been to this planet before, and I've not had a chance to communicate with the locals. Are you a local? What sex are you? You have names here. You're an intelligent species, aren't you? Oh, it, it, look, these are all first date questions, Juno. You gotta, we gotta, we gotta ask all these questions out to dinner first. Like, we gotta go to dinner first uh, and, and get all these questions. You are beautiful, by the way. I just, I just want you to know that that armor is absolutely beautiful. And if somebody drew fan art of me and you, I would not complain. Well, yes, I guess I'm intelligent. The girl in the helmet laughed. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself. You've probably never seen my kind. Oh, and where are my manners? I immediately perna pounced with questions. I mean, you can you can pounce on me anytime. Uh, you if you want to pounce, I mean, I'm not gonna say no. You can you can pounce on me. I'm not d d pounce on me, mommy. Sorry. Hi, my name is NV0903. I'm a protogen scientist traveling around the galaxy to collect information about fauna and flora in different planets. NV. Could you repeat it? NV0903, but you can call me Juno. I assume you have names here, right? What's your name? My name's Rael, and I'm. Oh, come on! Yes, Juno and Rael! Oh, I ship it! How old are you? I'm sorry, I completely forgot what people look like. I haven't encountered them for a long time. Wait, stop calling me that. I am Rael. And who are you? I've never seen anything like it. As I said, I'm a protogen scientist. We are an intelligent species of cyborgs from a very far corner of the universe. Your planet is poorly studied. My species visited it some time ago, but then, you know, everything was different here, and there was not much nature. Wow! I hope you don't want to enslave us or something like that. What? No! I'm a scientist and researcher. I study and document all the planets I travel to. This is our universal mission and even a hobby. We protogens don't enslave anyone. Don't worry. Ah, uh, well then. That's good. Welcome, I guess? Thank you. What stage of technological progress are you at now? What energy do you use? I blinked again. What are you talking about? Well, I guess you're not even a type 1. Damn, I'm sorry. Forget what I said. Everything has to come naturally. Your kind has to figure it out yourself. I'm forbidden to share knowledge. A friend of mine got to a planet a couple decades ago whose inhabitants didn't even invent the wheel yet and quickly told them everything about how to evolve as soon as possible. As soon as he did it, such chaos began there. It was horrible. So it's better not to tell you anything important. You'll have to do everything for yourself. What are you even talking about? Am I dreaming? 
No, why? Haven't you been in contact with other intelligent species before? I scratched my head. Well, except for... Except with the Googles, but they aren't that intelligent, just very clever animals. Googles? How interesting. And who is that? Uh, they're a kind of fish, but they aren't exactly fish. In short, they live underwater and they're smart creatures. You have a small planet, but it's great. We start sooner and finish faster, right? What do we start? As I said, I have to write down all the information about this planet's nature. Or at least everything I can get to. Could you take me to your elders or to whoever is in charge of your village? I swallowed, realizing that I couldn't go back there right now. And of course, I couldn't bring some creature with metal all over its body. They would, then they would definitely burn me at a ritual bonfire. I understood that starting a friendship with a lie was no good, and it didn't work at all with people, but I couldn't help myself. You know, you don't need to go to the village, actually. You're awfully lucky. The thing is, I'm, well, you could say, the second most important person in the village. I was lying godlessly, hoping Juno wouldn't see it. She said that she hadn't seen people for a long time. Maybe she didn't remember how they could lie? Are you? Great. Then, it's a long walk to the village. We'll go next time. You can count on me. I'll help you myself. I'll be your guide. It's not difficult for me. I know our planet inside and out, and I would like to get to know you inside and out as well. Wow, that was incredibly charged. Riel, that's just what I need. I didn't expect to be so lucky. Are you sure you know everything here? The eyes on Juno's helmet narrowed suspiciously. I immediately realized that I myself had absolutely no idea how to read if she was lying or being honest. I had never seen aliens like her and couldn't read their helmet expressions very well. What if she didn't believe me? I decided to lie till the end. Of course, I'm sure you won't regret it. I've lived here all my life. I'll tell you everything. Don't even worry about it. I smiled a little too broadly, reminding myself of my father and his much too wide smiles, and held out my hand to Juno. Well, do we have a deal? Juno looked at my outstretched palm and smiled. We do. I was still holding my palm, waiting for a handshake, and Juno was standing opposite and smiling. And? What? Won't you shake my hand? Juno blinked. God, she's adorable! Ah! We seal the deal, I assume? I'll go with you and help me out, and you, well, you'll help me out not to perish in these forests. Something like that. Juno shrugged, still not understanding what I was asking of her, but held out her hand. No, not this hand, the second one. You know, was surprised. What's the difference? This is inconvenient. Here, see, that's better. Her hand was warm and soft. Oh, we're holding hands already. Guys, we're holding hands. We're basically on third base. <laughs> we can start from the other shore. There's a forest further on where all sorts of little animals live. You're interested in that, aren't you? We can look for fangies. They're everywhere right now. It's mating season. Fangies? Interesting. I'll write it down for now. Juno pressed the button on her helmet and an image with letters appeared in front of her. I watched in amazement as she wrote something down without either using ink or pencil. Oh, you probably haven't seen this. It's a hologram. Don't worry. I reached out to touch it, but the image passed through my fingers. Cool. Where does it come from? Well, it's easy. There are special light bulbs on my helmet to create an image. Where, well, shall we go? I looked one more time at the strange thing, the hologram, and tried to catch it with my fingers, but didn't succeed. Of course. Let's go. At that moment, my stomach groaned loudly from hunger. I remembered that I hadn't eaten anything since yesterday and missed the usual, always on schedule breakfast. Listen, do you happen to have anything to eat in your huge metal thing? Juno looked at me and burst out laughing again. Okay, let me look for something. There should have been something left, I guess. Some fruit, as I recall. Let's go. What is this thing, by the way? Does it fly? Yes, it's called a jet. There's a lot of stuff in there. It's a cool thing. You'll like it. Only I can open it with my palm prints. No one else can access it. Juno walked over to the jet and put her hand on its side. At that moment, the panel slid away, making it possible to enter inside. Oh, I've never seen anything like that. Well, actually, this is an old model. I should buy a new one. I got it long ago. Such an unkillable thing. It's important to me as a memory, you know? I call it Pixie. That's adorable. I like Pixie. Juno laughed. I couldn't figure out what she was talking about. How could this huge steel thing be her best friend? When we were inside, I suddenly realized. Wait, is this thing alive? Goosebumps ran down my back as soon as I thought about a living creature which could fly through space. Moreover, now I was inside this thing, this pixie, and I didn't like it at all. It was like being inside a mythical beast, a giant animal that looks like a walking house with armor instead of skin and horns on its head. But when Juno saw the panic on my face, she burst out laughing. You should have seen your face, just hilarious. No, Rael, don't worry. It's not alive, although I would really like it to be alive. Sometimes I just want to chat with someone. Well, chat with a living being, not a... Welcome back, Juno. Glad you're back so soon. Oh my god! Well, hey! That's where we're gonna leave this video, I think. We met Juno! Holy crap! She's gorgeous! A fun! Ah! If anybody wants to draw fan art of Juno, any kind of fan art at all, I'm greatly appreciative of it, and I will be absolutely accepting of it. I will put it everywhere. I will do anything. Juno is a waifu bean. She's 
gorgeous and amazing and i'm looking forward to playing more of this game that being said we're gonna go ahead and end this video right now thank you everybody so much for watching if you want to see more hit that like button down below comment down below your reaction to seeing juno for the first time because that lets me know you guys want to see more of this if this is of interest if you guys want to see the end of this let me know this is called my furry protogen it is available on steam you can play it for yourself now it is a visual novel dating game thank you everybody so much for watching i am real the protogen and and I will see you and Juno in the next video. Bye bye, everybody! Wagga, 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 wagga,